Hi right, guys, today I want to talk about exposing the counsel of your heart. And I want to start in prayer. Father God, I thank you. I thank you for who you are. I thank you for every person that you lead to this video. I ask that you open their hearts to show them who you are, Father. To show them your nature. And I thank you for your goodness. It's for your sovereignty, for your justice. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I want you guys to think, have you ever been rejected? Have you ever been misjudged, mistreated, pushed aside because someone thought that, you know, maybe you're not good enough? Think about that for a moment, because I know every single person has been through that. And I've been through that. But you see... God does not look at us the way man looks at us. Man sees the outside. They see just what they want to see. But God sees the hidden things, the treasures in the heart. And he, he wants to expose the intentions of your heart. And he wants to bring out him in you. Like, is your intentions for doing the things you're doing, is it, is it for his kingdom? Or is it for your kingdom? Why do you do the things that you do? You can be a Christian and think that you're good because you do Christian things. You know, oh, I helped that old lady cross the street. You know, cool. But did you do it for you? Did you do it to make yourself feel good? Or did you do it for the love of God? God sees these things in your heart. He searches your heart and he knows. So I want you guys to really, really, really search yourself and expose the counsel of your heart and try to think, why do I do the things that I do? See, growing up, my mom, she, she raised me Christian and she always, she was so focused on what I shouldn't do. Don't hang out with those people. They're bad. Don't watch these shows. They're bad. Okay, cool. But God, he told me, it's not what you do, it's who you are. Now, he, he sees the things you do. Okay, you could do something, yeah, it's bad, but God, God doesn't look at what you did. He looks at your heart, and he says, okay, what was the intention of the action? And he knows your intentions. He knows the intention of your heart. Okay, you gave that person money, and everyone sees, oh, well, that, that's a really generous, kind-hearted person. But what if you just gave him money because you expected a blessing in return to be blessed back? God sees that. But the counsel of your heart is what's important, where your heart stands in Christ. You know, I wake up and I say, Father God, give to me what you would have me give to another. And don't let it be to build my kingdom, Father. Let it be for your glory, to build your kingdom. I want to expose my heart to him fully. Because that's what he's after. He's after your heart. He's not after your works. He's not after your deeds. He's not after your actions. All that stuff. That, that's not what it's about. Because it's not what you do. It's who you are. And who you are is a son and a daughter of the Most High God. And what you do flows from who you are. Because the Bible says that guard your heart because everything you do flows from it. It's the heart. It's a heart issue. And this is a beautiful thing. And it's it came to me because being rejected by man. You know, when, when I brought this up to pastor in a church to bring this message out, because I wanted to preach it in the church. And he told, me, he told me no, because, you know, my messages are good, he said, but they're, they're not long enough. They don't fit a half hour criteria. I need to work on extending them. So I fall short in man's eyes. But in God's eyes, I know I don't. Because I grew up getting beat at home, getting screamed at, told I was a failure. Go to school, everyone made fun of me, and I got picked last for all the sports. You know, I was never accepted. I I hit puberty late. I was always sh I was a short kid and weird and awkward and quiet. Everyone thought I was gay, and it was no one accepted me. But still, God decided to look at me and say, "I accept you. I haven't forsaken you." He's seen my heart and he's seen the intentions of my heart and he said, "I want you because I love you." 
Now it makes me think of King David. You know, Sam was going to, or the prophet Samuel was going to pick the next king. And all this man, all these man's sons were lined up, seven sons. Not all of them. David was out in the field. And the prophet, the, you know, the man was said, this is my firstborn son. He's strong. He's smart. He's handsome and all this stuff. And the prophet said, nope, not him. Went to the next one. Nope, not him. Went through all of them, said nope. And uh, he goes, do you have any more sons? Because the one who's made to be king isn't here. He said, yeah, I got one more, but he's a loser. He's over there with the sheep. <laughs> the way men look at us is not the way God looks at us. Because God seen the intention of King David's heart. He knew what kind of person he was. Just because he wasn't strong, just because he wasn't smart, doesn't mean that God didn't want him. God actually picked him over the ones that man would pick. So when man rejects you, is when God accepts you. And I love it. Because he's so beautiful the way he acts, the way he is, the way he flows. I fall more and more in love with him every single day. And I just want to be in a place where my heart is exposed fully. You know, I don't want to live in a place of religion. I don't want to live in a place of judgment. I don't want to live in a place of building my own kingdom. I want my eyes to be fixed on him. I want the intention of my heart to be him. I want my motivation to be him. Everything. Because something amazing happens when you put God first. If I take everything in your life and laid it out all on a platter, your, your pay, what you make at work, your money, laid that out on a platter, what, what do you put first with your money? What's first? The miles you drive on your car. What are you using your miles for? What's first? You know, I can go on and on about all this, but what do you put first in your life? Really, really, really think about that. Because there's something amazing that happens when you put God first. Because when you put Him first, He puts you first. You know, we're sitting here trying and trying and trying to be accepted by people that we're putting God behind us. We're not putting him first because we're trying to put ourselves first. And when that happens, we fall. We get humbled because those who exalt themselves will be humbled. That's what's written. And it's true. But... When you humble yourself, you're exalted. So if you put God first, he puts you first. And there's something really beautiful in that, very beautiful. <laughs> and you know, I think the Lord... Because I'm madly in love with him. But he loves me more than I love him. I am completely captivated by him. But he is more captivated by me. I am completely moved by him. But he is more moved by me. And I thank him that he came down to earth with nothing but us in mind. So we need to live our life and give what he gave us back to him. And we need to stay in a place where we have nothing but him in mind and put him first. We need to shift the motivation, the counsel of our heart. What drives us? What are we driving for? What are we striving for? You know, again, are you trying to build your kingdom or are you trying to build his? Is it about you or is it about God? Jesus died on a cross for you. And I, I know in my heart that if he decided, like, this isn't worth it, he would have got off of that cross. And if he would have got off that cross, that would have been the end of it. Every single person on this earth would have been wiped out because there would be no point to it anymore. But there's that love. And what's the intention of his heart? 
The intention of his heart was love for us, so the intention of our heart needs to be love for him. And we need to take his love and love others with his love. We need to show them who he is, because I'll tell you right now, right now, growing up, I hated Christians. I hated them completely. But I'm so glad that Jesus showed me who he is because I am overwhelmed by his goodness and by his love. He is amazing. But the reason I hated Christians is because the intention of their heart was to prove themselves as knowledgeable, to prove themselves that they know something and to act like their righteousness is better than me. And that's how they treated me. Like, I wasn't good enough. Like, oh, what you're doing is wrong. That's wrong. That's disgusting. You need to fix yourself. You need to get right so God can accept you. This was the kind of people that I was surrounded by. And I felt like because God's people couldn't accept me, how could God accept me? And there was a lie given to me by the devil where I literally thought that God wanted nothing to do with me. So this just, just backed up on it. It just kept rolling and rolling and rolling and rolling. People couldn't accept me. But then finally, Jesus revealed himself to me and showed me who he really is. And he told me, he said, because you have suffered, I will use you. And I see now that he looked at me and he didn't look at what was on the outside, that big mess full of pain, full of hurt, full of anger. He, he took that, he looked in my heart, and he said, who can he be? And he came, and he showed me who I can be. He revealed the counsel of my heart. He revealed something, that all that pain I went through, I understand it is so easy for me to talk to someone who hates Christians and have them turn around and think differently about who God is. It's easy for me to do because I know where they stand. And the intention of my heart is not, not to build my kingdom, not to prove my righteousness, not to tell them that they need to change. Because I really feel that telling people that they need to change and trying to change them and forcing a truth on them and trying to make them believe what you're saying, I really believe that that is control. And I believe that that comes from a spirit of witchcraft and it is very demonic because all it does is break people down and turn them around. Because the intention of your heart there is to build your own kingdom and not to build the kingdom of God. Because the kingdom of God has a foundation of love. If you speak the perfect truth, if you speak with the tongues of angels and don't have love, you're nothing. What is the intention of your heart? Where does the intentions of your heart lie? What is your purpose? This is really important. Because there's a lot of people, a lot of people who think that just because they do Christian things, they're okay. Just because they go to church, they're okay. But I want to tell you that it's not about being in a relationship with Jesus. It's about being married to Jesus. If you're in a relationship with Jesus, you're only spending time with him on, on Wednesdays and Sundays. Yeah, I'm going to go over and kick it with Jesus because we're in a relationship. No, every single day you need to be in his presence because you're married to him. He wants to be your number one. He is after your heart. He is after the intentions of your heart. Father God, I ask that you just expose the intentions of our heart, that you just lay it bare, Father. Because I know that when I got married, when I was with my wife and I did my vows, my heart was exposed. I wanted her to see me for who I was. And I wanted her to know that I loved her deeply. And I wanted her to know that I wasn't in this for sex, for stupid reasons, that I just was here because I wanted to be one with her because I loved her deeply, Father. And I want to get to that point with you. I want you to know that I love you deeply. I want you to just search my heart and realize its intentions and expose it, Father God. 
You know, and I want to go back to talking about uh, doing Christian things. Because if you, if you don't realize the intention of your heart, if, if you're not doing these things for him, if you're doing them for yourself, of a truth I know is that there is a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof is death. And that's a scary thought. You know, one day we're going to have to face the Father. And we're going to have to give account for every word spoken, every deed done, everything. You know, sometimes... Sometimes I'll approach people who are, uh, you know, bashing someone for, for not doing something right and just making fun of them and doing that. And I'll say, like, hey, that's not cool. And give them a truth. Like, oh, calm down, dude. It's just a joke. Okay. I give someone a truth that they don't accept it. That's fine. Like I said earlier, you can't force truth on someone because that's control. You give them a truth, you have pleased God. It's simple. Someone's in the wrong. You have to give them the truth, yes. But if they don't accept it, fine. That's between them and God. You please God because the intention of your heart was to turn that person around. Because they didn't accept it, that's not your fault. That That's not your fault at all. <laughs> Just let it go. Let go and let God pray on it. You planted that seed. You don't bring the increase. God brings the increase. This thing is so simple, and people overcomplicate it, and people try to build on themselves and be something that it's not. Because the gospel is so simple, and it's built on a foundation of love. Love for God, love for... The, the two greatest commandments, love the Lord your God and love your brothers and sisters as yourself. You know, and I want you guys to realize that we don't love God as much as we love ourselves because if, if we put ourselves on the same level as God, that's not really humility. That's something else. So, and, and we've done this thing in our culture where we've exalted love so much that it's silent, that it's accepting of all things. But is it really love to see someone on the path that leads to death and say like, oh, well, that's what they want to do. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to love them and I'm going to respect that. And that's cool. Go ahead. But an open rebuke is better than silent love. Isn't it better to say like, don't do that because that's going to lead to death? Speak a word to save their life, maybe? I don't know. Give it a try sometime. See what, see what happens in your heart. Uh, my phone's probably glitching out because people keep calling me. You know, but we're supposed to be searching ourselves daily. Daily seeking and searching ourselves. Seeking God and searching ourselves. Getting our hearts right. Because when God says make sure your house is right, it's your heart. Because your house is your heart because that's where the Holy Spirit lives. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit, the do the most, the power of God in you. You know, this is another thing that's really important. Because your heart can't be right unless you have the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is everything that God did for us. He died to give us the Spirit. You know, we're, we're in a place now that the prophets spoke of many people in the Old Testament days. They wanted to go through these doors. They knew what was coming, and they wanted it so bad. They tried so hard to enter these doors, but couldn't because these doors were closed. But now, the doors are open. Not many people want to walk through them. See, the Bible says to strain every nerve to enter through the straight gate because many will try and fail. And the reason they fail is because they don't realize the intention of their heart. They don't search themselves and look into their heart and find out, why do I do the things I do? Am I doing these things for God or am I doing these things for myself? 
You know, you can give all the money you want. You can give away all your possessions. You can speak the truth. Do all these perfect Christian things. But if you don't have love, it's worthless. So the counsel of your heart, the intentions of your heart, is the most important thing. The most important thing that you can do. To know where you're coming from where you're going, to know who goes before you and who goes after you, to walk in love, to walk in the spirit, to walk in truth and worship in truth and in spirit, to be with him, to know him, to love him, to follow him. Now, Jesus is amazing, absolutely amazing. He is so focused on our hearts. You know, we get worried. Like, Father, sorry, I, I swore, I sinned, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to. But this Jesus took care of sin. And no, I'm not saying that it gives us a right to sin because we're supposed to strain away from sin. And Jesus says that if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And his commandment is to love God and to know God is to love God and to... To be one with him. To be holy as he is holy. To strain to be in his image. To be his likeness. But not to do it to build yourself up. But to do it to build his kingdom. To let it be for him. Father, don't let me go pray for people to, to be for me. I want it to be all about you all the time, Father God. All about you. Never let it be about me. Because it's not about me. It's never about me. It's always about you. You know, I'm not really a good speaker. And I'm okay with that. Like, I was actually turned down from giving this message in a church. I think I said that already, but I'm going to say it again. But I was turned down from giving this message in a church. Because I, I can't keep the message long enough. <laughs> but, I mean, at the same time, God's telling me, putting this on my heart, like, when man rejects you, I accept you. And then I want to go give this message and I get rejected. But it's just like, what are you telling me, God? What are you, what are you teaching me here? Where, where are we going with this? It's awesome. I love how he works. I love it. I absolutely love it. I love people. Because Jesus loves people. You know, when I got saved, when Jesus finally showed me who he is, and all that bondage broke off of me, and I realized that there's freedom in him, he asked me, he said, what do you want? And I told him, I said, I want to be able to reach the people that felt as broken as me. I want to be able to touch their lives and show them the freedom that you give. So you ask me what I want. I'll tell you, I just want a life to see your glory. That's the intention of my heart, to see the Father's glory, to see people set free, to realize who they are. That's all I want to do. I want to live this life for God's glory. Definitely. Jesus is so amazing. I'm, I'm so in love with him. There's nothing else I want more. Jesus is the fullness. The fullness of my cup. The completeness of my salvation. He is my righteousness. He is my rock. Without him, there's nothing. So why would I waste my time... Having the intentions of my heart being to build my own kingdom when I can build his. When anything I gain for myself or build for myself, the Bible says that all the works of man will be destroyed in a fervor and heat. 2 Peter 3.10, check it out. Everything that we make for ourselves will be wiped out. But everything we gain for God stands for eternity. So let's make a heart shift today. Let's shift our hearts to God. Let's start building his kingdom and not ours. Let's start doing things with the intention 
of loving him to being in love, completely in love with the Father. Because you have to realize everything you do, your ministry, your work, your, your Christian acts, all that stuff, it doesn't matter. Because it's not what you do, it's who you are, it's your heart. God takes her heart, looks at it, examines it. So, I challenge you guys today. Pray. Ask God. Father, expose how you reveal, or how you see my heart. Expose it. Expose my heart. Show me the intentions of my heart. If it's not for you, then reveal it to me. And allow me to repent. Because this is what we need to do. It needs to be about Him. It needs to be all about Him. Really looking... Bleh. <laughs> really search yourself. And ask. Are you married to Jesus? Or are you in a relationship with Jesus? Are you a Christian because it benefits you? Or are you a Christian because you're head over heels, overwhelmed and in love with God? Are you a Christian because it's, it's beneficial to you? And you can get some stuff out of it because God's promises are pretty cool. Or are you a Christian because you really love people and you want to see them set free and you want to see their hearts opened? You know, it's, it's, I'm say it again, it's not what you do, it's who you are. So what is the counsel in your heart? I want you to expose it. I want you to take your heart and completely expose it to God. Completely expose it. Find out what your intentions are, what drives you. I thank you guys for watching. I love you guys. God bless. I'm just going to close in a prayer. Even though I've been praying mostly this whole time. Constant prayer. It's about being a, a willing vessel for, for the Lord. It's not about me. It's about Him. Focus on Him. Father God, I thank you again for everyone that you bring to this video. Everyone that watches it to its completion, Father. I ask that you just open their hearts and just expose it and show them exactly what is the intention of their heart. Is it love? Is it for you? Or is it something else? And Father, for those who have been rejected, let them know that you accept them. Let them know that you love them. Because you're a good, good Father. And that's the simplicity of the gospel. And I love that song. You're a good, good father. And we're loved by you. It's who he is. And that's who we are. Loved. Cherished. Accepted. Anointed. And blessed. You guys have a blessed day. God bless you.